Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to dig even deeper into our Python for Forensic Chemistry series. Now, the goal of this is to show how the tools we've developed over the past several videos can be reapplied in this context now for forensic chemistry. Here is the paper where we're there talking about the importance of wavelength selection and on scene identification of drugs of abuse. So all the data in this series will likely come from this paper in which we're going to be analyzing cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine. We're going to look at the adulterants, but we're also going to look to make sure that the data we're going to use in those models is of high quality. And so as I was reading this paper, one of the things that jumped out to me is found in the materials and methods section. I noticed that they mentioned the standard normal variant SNV for pre-processing, and it says that data were normalized to compensate for absolute intensity differences that may originate from the physical sample. And so I want to demonstrate what this looks like, why we do it, as this is a vital preprocessing step, especially key for spectroscopic analysis. And so let's switch to the notebook and we'll get started. Here is the abstract for the data in brief. So this is where the data was directly sourced. That full length article can be found here. And when this is done, if you want, let me know if you want me to upload this to GitHub so that you can now uh, replicate all these. Or if you follow along, you might already have these in your own notebook. And now in this video, we're going to focus on the standard normal variant. So this SNV idea. And so the goal is to reduce the effects of scatter. And so I'm first going to show you what that might look like. And then we'll go through these bullet points. And then finally, we will end with showing how to write this code so that we can actually perform our own preprocessing using the standard normal variant approach. So let's say we have some representative spectrum and we have our first trace in blue. And that might have some pattern like this, some complex pattern. And we want to compare it to this trace in red that may look a little bit like this, where there are some similarities, some differences. And let's say we have an additional trace in red that maybe is somewhere between them. And we're not quite sure which of these differences are due to the sample and which of these differences might be due to other artifacts. And so the scatter we're talking about is really this space here, the space between these peaks where we're unsure if these are quantitative differences in the material, something that's related to the actual composition of the material, or if these are just differences in the thickness of the glass or the particulates that were also measured and maybe interfering with the analysis. And so this is what we really want to control. And I will show you now how we can do this with Python. And so the other benefit of using this is that it can enhance the subtle differences. So effectively what we're going to be doing for this data is Z scaling each spectrum. That is, we're going to compute the mean. We're going to subtract all of the data points in that spectrum from the mean and then divide by the standard deviation so that we have a univariate signal. And that will highlight some of the smaller changes and help us to control for this scatter, which will appear somewhat as systematic error that will be addressed using this SMV processing. And so to visualize and import the data, we're going to use pandas, numpy, seaborn, and matplotlib. I'll explain the data a bit more in a future video, but here I just want to quickly import it so we can see the effect of this SNV. So I'll show you before and after. And then in the next video, we'll dig more into the data and some of the pre-processing of the extra data structure before we move even further into our analysis. So first, let me show you what this data looks like so we can get an idea of our starting point. So if we just use the df.head, this will give us the first five rows of this data frame where each column is a wavelength and our, in this case, we're in the visible and IR regions of the electromagnetic spectrum and each row is its own sample. So it's really important to understand the orientation of the data. And if we were to plot those first five rows of data, let's transpose it so that we now have each row as a wavelength and each column is its own sample. And if we just use the plot method, we have this data here. So this is a good example of what the SNV could help us address. We see that we have different absorbance values which may or may not be due to the actual changes in chemical composition, but again, could be due to other experimental artifacts that we want to control before we do even more advanced processing. So let's begin here. Let's just make a cell. Uh, let's just say SNV, run that, and let's begin. So let's make a variable that's called mean centered. So what we want to do is subtract each data point from the average of all the data points in that individual spectrum. And so 
for K1, we would compute the mean value for K1 and then subtract each data point from that mean value. So to do that, we're gonna use the data frame algebraic methods. And first let's compute, uh, let's not save that variable yet. So first let's compute the mean. And if by default, the mean will compute across each of the wavelengths. And this is not what we want. So this is gonna compute a mean for 350, 351, 352, but that would be of course for all of the samples. What we wanna do is set the axis equal to one. And so what this does now is gives us a mean absorbance value for K1, K10, K11, K12. So now we have a mean for this sample. That is how we're going to now mean center that sample. This is different than how we Z scale an entire data set for some other analysis. This is now a sample by sample pre-processing step. And so now we have the mean. We can, in a similar fashion as we have df.mean axis equal one, we can subtract that using the df.sub method. So this will now subtract the mean from the data. And in this case, we want to ensure that we're subtracting across axis zero. And so now we have our mean centered data. And so let's store this as that variable mean centered equals. So this is just step one in this process where we have first mean centered the data. And so now we have to control the variance of each of these samples. And so this would be our SNV data. So let's just call this SNV data. And we will do this again in sort of a, a nested step in the way we did the mean centered data. So the first thing we want to do is compute the standard deviation, which would be computed from the original data frame. So we'll take again, axis equal one, because we want the standard deviation of each sample, not across all of the data. And this will give us that. And instead of subtract, we will do divide. So df.div axis equals zero. And now we have our SNV data. And so when we look at this data frame, it looks somewhat similar to what we had before. However, if we plot it, we can start to see some of the differences that occur as a function of this pre-processing step. Well, let's plot the first five rows because it's a little difficult to see the impact of this pre-processing without looking at some of the spectra together. And so we have our head, let's transpose and let's plot this. Oh, this should be mean centered, not DF. So we want to compute the standard deviation of the original data frame, but then take the mean centered DF and divide that. So this is a, a, how we do the Z scaling essentially. And so let's run this again. And there we go. <laughs> it looks much better. And so if we compare the plot, let me show what we had before with our original data frame, which I think I called DF. So let me just put it right there. And let's see if I shift tab, we can see them together. We kind of can, we can see this, this part here, which is what really matters. So we can see how by centering the data, one, the mean of each of these spectra is zero. So there should be um, some points below zero and then some points above zero. We can also see that some of the smaller features become way more distinct. Something else that was a little obscured is that the green and orange traces are pretty similar to each other, but we have this scattering effect in the data. Um, again, this bottom trace is the one that was not processed. And again, here we see that the purple and red traces come together quite a bit and here they, they remain apart. So you can kind of see the impact of this pre-processing. And thus, this will have a secondary effect if we look at the PCA of this, which we will do very quickly. So let's go back to our standard view. Let's just quickly write our PCA components and create that instance. And with this transform pandas, we will output a data frame automatically. I won't do any further reprocessing in this video. We'll just plot it so we can see what we've got. And then in the next video, we will take this analysis a step further. So. Let's fit transform our two data frames. Let's take our DF initially. So this is that original data frame and let's rename our columns and let's change this to PC one and PC two. Okay. Oops. It is actually PCA one and PCA zero. So let's just tweak those just a tiny bit just so it's a little bit more clear. And if we plot 
that x equal to pc1 and y equal to pc2, those are the positional arguments, we can plot this data and see that, oh, and let's set, instead of this, let's do scatter. So here, we can see with the data frame, there might be some structure, but it's a little obscured. And this is largely due to some of the clutter that comes in with the data set that was not pre-processed. If we copy this down and pass in our S and V data, you see how much more clear some of these patterns are within the data. And now with what I know about the data set, which I haven't fully processed yet, this would make sense with the structure. And I'll show you more about that structure in an upcoming video. But we can see here how it's kind of there, right? But it's way more clear when we actually get these data to look way more similar to one another simply by using this SNV pre-processing. And so what I would do next, maybe off camera, is to convert this to a function in which the input is a data frame and the output is this SNV data. If you want to see me do that, I can just make a video on that, but I've demonstrated that in previous videos as well. So in the next video, we're actually going to talk about how we can extract the information from this key here. And I'll explain more about the overall data set and what our goals will be as we move forward in this analysis. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.